Well, it's the morning of the 18th at, uh, in Leipzig um, in 1813, and it's uh, mid morning, 10 a.m. Um, so I'll just uh, quickly show you um, what happened. In the northwestern flank, uh, the Prussians uh, pushed into this line here um, using the bayonet because uh, it's an improved position and the rules I use you can um, for restricted terrain and those sort of things uh, sometimes the troops will resort to the bayonet and go in column uh, but some of the other uh, supporting attacks were repulsed and this front um, well there's a story to tell here later in the um, <coughs> in the main front in the south and southeast, um, early in the morning, um, coalition artillery was able to uh, sight several um, French formations that weren't behind ridges, <coughs> and with reconnaissance out there as well, and um, disrupt them, disorganize, suppress. And um, then uh, heavy cavalry came through and disjointed this whole French line here early in the morning. Uh, in retrospect, sending the guard north to uh, stop the Swedes in Bullow might have been a, an error because, uh, on my part, because the, uh, these Russian guard and <coughs> Austrian guard here have high morale and kept passing morale checks whereas the French kept failing and couldn't seem to take a trick either. I mean, I, every time a die roll for artillery fire they just uh, miss um, and the Allies are just hitting every time. So, <coughs> um, let's have a look at uh, what the plans were for uh, early in the morning. So the plans were for the Austrians, Russians and Prussians to push up from the south and the southeast. Uh, Bullo's Corps would be coming on from the east and in the northwest uh, where the star is there, uh, the Prussians and some Russians were going in there and, and you might remember if you watched the previous video there's a force coming from the north as well. So that uh, was all like pretty exciting. I was really enjoying that. And then I had a weather check at uh, around midday. And um, it just started to rain. And rain heavily. And uh, the particular rule set I use, the uh, artillery is affected by rain, which it has to be on roads or trails, otherwise it uh, gets disorganized. Cavalry charges uh, precluded. Artillery fire um, bombardment over a kilometer, which is like two hexes, um, is precluded. Visibility goes down. And um, and even uh, musket fire is uh, got a die roll modifier against it. So, um, only thing left was cold steel and um, um, my research shows that it wasn't very often that cold steel would be used uh, in open terrain, just mainly uh, in broken or protected terrain like villages and improved positions, those sort of things. So uh, I, I uh, preclude that. So basically um, for all of the afternoon there was uh, just uh, a lot of shooting but not much hitting. The line in the northwest uh, was restored and the Prussians thrown back. Uh, but the, in the northeast, it started to crumble in, even with the guard there, with um, Russian L Corps coming in and, uh, and the uh, French 4th Corps was uh, demoralized. Um, French 2nd Corps is demoralized. Um, and so basically, um, that was what was happening. So if I just go, what happened, uh, let's have a quick look at that. 
So you can see here that by the end of the day we had the LO cores, the Leipzig observation core, Victor's second core, the first second young guard which was demoralized on the uh, 17th, uh, Bertrand's fourth core, Morrison's fifth core, Aragno's ninth core were all demoralized. Uh, mainly through um, musket fire and um, things that happened on the previous days. And on the Allies' side, uh, this Russian corps, uh, Sakhin, almost demoralized. Wittenstein just went away. And Prussian first and second corps demoralized. The light Austrians, third and second Austrian, uh, were all demoralized. Whereas um, Constantine's score uh, is pretty robust and the uh, Austrian reserves up here as well. So in the morning, how did it end up? Uh, so during the night, there was an order to uh, skiaddle out of town to the west and the cavalry corps uh, set up a, uh, a rear guard. So we have uh, second cavalry corps here, first cavalry corps, Fourth and Fifth Cavalry Corps here. The Guard, uh, I know it's not historical very much to have the Guard guarding the rear, but um, I've just had them here uh, just because of traffic. And everyone else is um, scattling to the west, having pushed the, this uh, demoralized corps down here, which had to be supported by some priest Russian corps and far to the south this demoralized light core. So um, I'm probably not going to play through the morning to the lunchtime. Um, it's, uh, I did a weather check and it's raining yet again. Uh, all I can see happening is uh, some cavalry fights here uh, because otherwise I'll just retreat before combat. And I can see no real way of um, blocking any of these uh, French movements. So my uh, review of this would be that um, seems to work pretty well. I look at casualties. So uh, second core casualties, third, fourth core, many casualties, fifth core. 6th, 7th Corps, 8th, not that many, but remember that was sent west to protect the, the, the way home, Ninth, McDonald's Corps, quite a lot, and uh, Leipzig Observation Corps, and uh, most of the guard was okay, Cavalry Corps a few steps, and for the Allies, uh, Europe's first Corps took the most hits, and Kleist's Corps, and 3rd and 4th Austrian Corps, and the Russians' uh, Wittenstein's Corps. So um, I think it's a fairly good model. Um, so I think if you play with uh, the original rules by Kevin, uh, it works well. I didn't. Um, neither did I play with the NLC. Uh, rules, Napoleon's later uh, campaigns rules because I was playing solo uh, and so basically I use a Wargame Grogs modification for solo with chip pull. Um, main uh, aspect would be there's a restriction on how much fire you can go through a hex side and facing matters, right? Which, where it doesn't in the others. So uh, I'll leave it there. Um, I'm going to go on and do some more of these uh, OSG uh, battles and uh, have a look at the diplomacy. I think they're, they're a great product. Um, if I'm not playing uh, OCS or uh, card-driven games, uh, this is uh, this is my preference. I think they're, they're pretty cool. Right, so that's it.